Good evening. Welcome to the Church of the Advent. As they say in the WestJet world, we know there are other options out there. It's good to be here. Since 2006, shortly after my arrival here as parish priest at the Church of the Advent, we have facilitated a very large number of political forums. The advantage of doing a number of forums over a period of time is that in no way do we get identified with particular issues in any one election. We have unbelievably sponsored three federal election forums in that time. This is the second municipal and we have had one provincial during that time. We do this in part because of my conviction that the church should be a place for communication and exchange of ideas within the community. Indeed, I have a biblical foundation for this as well. It comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And to give an extremely short sermon, the people of Israel were taken as captives by the Babylonian to a place far away. And many said, we will not cooperate with our new overlords. And Jeremiah, inspired by God, said, and I quote, we should work for the peace and prosperity of the city where we have been sent into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. So, I believe the church belongs in the public spaces of the community. Yes, there are challenges, and there have been challenges in the past with all fora. Nevertheless, I'm glad to be here tonight and welcome all of you. A couple of announcements. This evening's session will be videoed and will appear on YouTube. I need to clarify with the candidate, we didn't find out until the last minute, are you folks okay with your comments being um, uploaded to YouTube? Does anyone object? Those of you who may ask questions in the open mic session afterwards, if you do not want your comments to be included on the YouTube record, simply when you state your name, say, I do not wish to have my comments broadcast, and the videographer will respect your requests. Also to mention that some of those who are not here tonight as candidates have dropped off materials. They are available in the narthex, and I encourage you to look at them. Also, we have at least one person running for school trustee here tonight, and I encourage you to visit with her and pick up her pamphlet, and there may be some others here as well. I want to acknowledge the efforts of Mr. Jim Belfry, who over the last few days has been in contact with myself and has done some good mediatorial work in trying to put things together in a single package. Thank you, Jim, for your reconciling efforts. It didn't come to fruit in quite the way we had hoped, but I acknowledge your efforts and am grateful for them. Amongst the many levels of politics, federal, provincial, and municipal, Municipal politics arguably affect us most in our daily lives. Whether we are residents here, whether we conduct business or an active profession here, the quality of life in our community and the environment in which we do our work and exercise our play depends tremendously on local issues, local decision making, and the persons who make those decisions. Therefore, it is tragic that in the last election, only 27% of the electorate voted. As we hear folks' comments tonight, I encourage us all to think about those who we could speak with and we could encourage to vote, especially those in younger and emerging generations. For indeed, we have the privilege in Canada of a free democratic franchise. This is a gift not accessible or available in all areas of the world. So friends, let us commit to do this. We meet tonight in a place of worship. This is a place where we bury people, we baptize the newborn and others who have discovered faith, we celebrate the rites and passages of people's lives. This is, in one sense, a specially set aside holy place. So let us, in all our comments tonight, speak the truth and express it in the context of love. I invite us to share a time of silence let's say 20 to 30 seconds, and then I will share some words which are very well known to you by now, and then I will introduce Skip, our moderator. Let us be silent. My 
friends, love is better than anger. Hope is better than fear. Optimism is better than despair. So let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic, and it will change the world. That message from the late Jack Layton. Our moderator this evening is Skip Triplett. Skip moved to Colwood in 2008 upon retirement as president of Kwantlen University College, a sister institution to Vancouver Island University located on the Lower Mainland. Skip moderated on the Lower Mainland several candidate debates in Surrey and Delta. Uh, Skip wishes you to know that he is not a member of the West Shore Chamber of Commerce. He is in fact a warden here at the Church of the Advent. He has served in the Canadian military. He is an active member of the Rotary Club of West Shore. He moderated a recent all-candidates meeting in Langford. And recently, he facilitated fora throughout BC on behalf of the provincial government and has assembled and will shortly publish a report on gaming fund revenues and government support of social and arts programs throughout BC. I believe he is ideally suited by his own personal experience and his recent experience traveling throughout BC to facilitate our session tonight. Please welcome Skip Trip. Well, I'm not a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Something else I'm not is a priest, so my sermon will be a lot shorter. <laughs> uh, before I start, I wanted to let you know that there uh, will be advanced polls on the 9th and the 16th of November. They're at City Hall, and the polls open at 8 and close at, at 8. So you have those two opportunities uh, as well as, as actual election day. Also, uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in Isabel Theatre uh, on Goldstream and Spencer School, there will be an all-candidates meeting for the school board, so we invite you to, uh, to take part there too. I want to thank you for being here tonight. It, it's a great turnout. It's nice to see, it's really great to see that so many neighbours care, both as uh, participants here this evening and also as, as candidates. As a result of my last uh, job, I've worked with an awful lot of politicians from all of the provincial parties and uh, a lot of municipal politicians in, in several cities. And one thing that I've noticed that all of them have in common <coughs> is they care. Now, they may have different ideas about things, how to make things work, but they care. And so I'd ask you to respect that, uh, that caring uh, tonight. Um, no jeering or cheering, please. Applause is fine, uh, but let's be respectful of, of folks who uh, are up here because they want to serve you and, uh, and they, they do care. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what uh, the process uh, is, is tonight. Um, a number of questions were emailed to the Chamber of Commerce as they were last week in, uh, in Langford. Those questions were all sent to me. So I think I had something like 26 or 27 uh, this morning, and I read them all, and sure enough, three or four or five are the same question. So I just combined those. Other questions started with some preamble that gave away the answer that the questioner was looking for. <laughs> so things like, given that we have a terrible problem with such and such, what's your position on such and such? So I took out the given that we have a terrible problem with and just left the what's your position on, uh, on, on such and such. So that's the only editing that, uh, that I've, I've done. Um, we are first going to uh, give the mayor, the uh, candidates for mayor, I can say that word. Yeah. We're going to give the candidates for, for mayor three minutes uh, each to make opening statements, followed by each candidate for councillor two minutes. When they're all uh, complete with their statements, I'm going to read to you the 20-odd questions that I have from the Chamber of Commerce. So you'll all hear what they are, and the candidates will hear what they are. Then I'm going to ask you to um, write down on, on these. Uh, Ken, or we'll get somebody to put up your hand, and we'll send you a, a piece of paper. So you can write whatever question you would like to, to ask on that. 
We're going to take a, a five minute uh, break, five minutes or so. I'm going to compile all of those, do the same thing. If six people have asked the same question, we're only going to ask it, it once. I'm going to give every question a number. I'm going to put the numbers in a box. I actually had said, can we shoot, use a collection plate because people might put things in it instead of <laughs> take them out. We're going to put all of the, we're going to give each question a number that will go into, into uh, a box and each candidate's name will go into a different box. So then I'm going to say to somebody in the audience, pick a number. And so if it's question 12, question 12 will get asked to, I'll say to somebody else, pick three candidates' names. So I, we're going to try and be completely uh, fair. At, at the end of, of that session, we'll keep going as long as there are questions or, or we uh, run out of time. Uh, if we're still going with, with that at around probably 8.30, I'll stop asking the questions. We'll have an open mic session and give you a chance to ask any remaining questions that, uh, that, that you might have. And then we're going to have a mix and mingle so you can uh, <coughs> talk to people personally. So that's, that's the uh, plan for, for this evening. Uh, so let's uh, get, get started. Uh, Carol Hamilton is the first candidate for mayor because she's closest to me, not because she's the first. Uh, so I'll we'll ask her to go first, uh, followed by Jason. Skip a couple of things. Your sermon was 1.5 minutes longer than mine. Oh, was it? <laughs> Also, when folks are speaking, um, I will time you. 30 seconds before the end of your time, I'll ring the bell once. Keep going, but when you hear the bell ring twice, that means your time is up. Please finish your sentence and then be seated. Do you folks want to come up to the dais for your opening statements? I think that would be nice. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, fellow candidates, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carol Hamilton and I'm running for mayor. I believe qualities you want in a mayor are leadership, fiscal responsibility, and progressive thinking. Leadership by working with our regional neighbors to create a transportation plan that makes sense and is economically practical. Leadership in supporting the commuter rail option to ease congestion on our roads and make commuting less stressful. Leadership by supporting commercial development so that Colwood residents will be able to live, work, and recreate locally. As mayor, I will show leadership by engaging members of the council, staff, and the public in creating a Colwood that we can all be proud of. This will take cooperation, dedication, and above all, respect for what each individual brings to the table. As taxpayers, you and I are dealing with difficult economic challenges. These conditions impact Colwood, and it is our duty to ensure that our city's budget reflects this. We must strike a balance between the meetings of today's expenses and at the same time prepare for our future. As your mayor, I will implement fiscal responsibility and not sacrifice core services. When it comes to fiscal responsibility, we cannot throw caution to the wind. These are your tax dollars and we are talking about and I know that you want that spent wisely. Expectations must be balanced with financial realities. I will work with council and staff to achieve and balance. Recent changes to the sewer situation will make it easier and more cost effective for residents to hook up to this service, helping to pave the way for future residential and commercial development. Progressive thinking means planning beyond tomorrow. It means implementing a vision with honesty and transparency. I want the same as you do. Vibrant, safe streets, dynamic developments to diversify our tax base and the public services we all need. Economic drivers come with the new shipbuilding contract announcement positive changes at Royal Roads, the settlement of the sewer bylaws and the new school announcements are all hallbringers of a very bright future and it's up to your elected mayor and council to keep this ball rolling. Progressive thinking means putting the amalgamation issue on the table, but not as an issue for a council alone. I will commit to working with our West Shore regional neighbours to jointly commission a cost-benefit study on both service-based and political amalgamation. The study would be released in full to the public within my term of office with an opportunity of a question put to referendum at the next election uh, for all of the West Shore. As your mayor, I will be committed to working with newly elected and returning candidates in council to bring out the best in them, the best in our city staff, and the best in our community. Thank you for coming this evening and showing your interest in our community. I'm proud to ask for your vote on November the 19th. Thank you. Thank you and uh, good evening. Welcome to all. I'm going to start most of the debate.
basic introduction speech, as probably most of you know me well already. Briefly though, I'm a retired forestry research scientist. I've lived in Colwood for 20 years. I've been married for 33 years with two adult children and have served three terms on Colwood Council. You can find more details in my flyer and on my website. Let's jump right to the main course. Why should you elect me, Mayor of Colwood? First, I am by far the most experienced candidate with nine years on council and serving with two different mayors and a diverse assortment of councillors and city staff. I have served on all of the city standing committees except protective services. I have served on the CRD board as an alternate director and a member of several subcommittees. I have served on several local and intermunicipal, I have trouble with that word, communities. This wealth of experience makes me the best candidate for mayor of our fine city. Second, integrity. My record shows that I have always attended meetings well prepared. I always put the wishes and interests of the people of Hollywood first, voting for them, even when my staff was unpopular with council. I always did my best to consider other points of view and to be civil in my debates. You can trust me to represent your wishes to the best of my abilities. Third, open. Anyone who followed my three terms on Colwood Council knows that I tried to minimize the number of issues we discussed in camera. I was always forthright with my stand, no hidden agendas. You can rely on me to make the next council the most open and transparent that I can achieve. Now let's talk about issues. As I see it right now, there are three issues, main issues facing Colwood. Unfortunately, the first of these is distrust of the civic government. There is a public perception that too many things are done behind closed doors with important decisions made before the public had the chance to comment. This must be changed. It is a bad perception. The public has a right to know what is going on at City Hall. If elected, I will endeavor to make the council as transparent as possible. I will publicize all of my meetings as mayor with groups or individuals. I will publicize all of my expenses incurred to the city. And I will publicize these weekly on an open forum like a public website. What can you do? Well, first you can elect me as mayor. Second, remember, the mayor only has one vote on council, so you must make informed choices before council. Look at what they did as much as what they say. Finally, get out and vote on November 19th and bring your neighbors with you. Thank you. Okay, so let's go in the other order around the table and uh, ask Corey Logan to start. And councillors have two minutes. You'll get a warning at one minute and 30 seconds. Good evening, everyone, and uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, uh, I think, making the right choice and coming out tonight in droves. This is very encouraging. I want to start uh, by asking you a couple of questions. Uh, I, I want you to think about uh, where you want your community in, in 5, 10, 15 years from now. And also I want you to think about uh, the, the type of person or the people that you want to help make that vision uh, come true. The answers to those questions, ladies and gentlemen, are critical. You're going to hear many promises over the next two weeks. And as you know, when any of us gets elected, we're only one voice and one vote. So it's a very important, as you've heard uh, previously, that you elect the people that can get along, that can have differing opinions, but still respect the opinions of other councillors and residents. Now, personally, I don't believe in making promises, but what I do believe in is setting goals. Some of the goals that I would like to work towards in the next term are investment in the business community, cooperation with other levels of government, community grants, beautification, the elimination of graffiti, and protecting our environment, just to name a few. I've consistently proven during my term on council that I can work collaboratively with all my colleagues and reach general agreement. And I have proven that I can get things done. Prime example, fire flows on Triangle Mountain have been a critical public safety issue. And I fought hard at the Water Commission level and convinced the Commission members to correct fire flows in the entire West Shore in just the next five years. This took collaboration, respect, and hard work. 
We've got lots to, uh, to be proud of in Collingwood, and yes, we've had some significant challenges over the past three years, but you know what? We have survived, we are stronger, and we are more balanced because of it. Now let's celebrate our accomplishments, let's be positive uh, looking to the future, let's challenge ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get it done. So on November the 19th, vote for Gordy Wilkin. Thank you. Precise timing by everybody. All yours, Cynthia. Hello and good evening, and thank you so much for coming. It's always wonderful to see uh, a room full of people come out really caring about democracy in Colwood, which is what I'm all about. <clears throat> I present myself to you to be elected for my fourth term. I started running in 2002. My daughter, I believe, was in grade two. She's in grade 11 now. Um, I'm just your average, ordinary person who cares about what's going on in Colwood. I'm a working mother of three. They're kind of big. They still haven't left the nest. But um, I believe that's what we're there to do. We're there to represent you. I'm not there to be a chartered accountant or an engineer. I'm there to make sure that the engineers that we have are accountable to the people and that they answer the questions that you need answered. The most important thing for me is that the citizens of Colwood know what's going on. And time and again, those 75% of people who are not coming up to the polls, who are not exercising their democratic rights, um, that we are fighting so hard to establish in places like Afghanistan are saying that they can't come because they don't understand the issues or they don't know how to participate. And I don't want it to feel like that when you come to council. You should not be under attack. It should be a comfortable place where you speak to people and tell them what your concerns are and find out answers to your questions. If you elect me, I know it's a promise, but I found a way to do it. I'm going to bring back video taking of council meetings so that you can watch and see for yourself exactly what's going on. Thank you so much. Go for Cynthia. And Judith Cullington. Thank you, Judith Collington running for re-election on Colwell Council, and I'm going to start by saying I want to see this many people at every council meeting. Where are you? Sometimes it's lonely out there. Um, Colwood is a fantastic place. It's a wonderful place to live, it's a wonderful place to raise a family, and it's been my privilege to serve the people of Colwood for the last three years. I think we're a community with real vision. We have an award-winning official community plan. I helped to write it, I've been having fun trying to help implement it as well. Like other communities, we faced some pretty big challenges over the last years. But I'm very proud of what our council has achieved. We've been digging out of our financial woes. We've resolved some of those long-standing sewer issues. We've legalized secondary suites to create affordable housing. And hooray for new high schools! <laughs> we've made tough decisions, that, but they've put our community on a much stronger footing. And at the same time, we've found a way to keep Colwood moving forward. This is important. We need to broaden our tax base and build a strong local economy. That's going to be what's going to help keep our taxes reasonable. That's why I've supported new developments, particularly the ones that bring commercial opportunities and new jobs. And I hope you've all checked out the new Red Barn Market. I've been working hard with our community partners to create real positive change. And this year, Colwood won an award for our partnership with Royal Roads University and BC Hydro. I also obtained a grant of almost $4 million from the federal government for our innovative solar Colwood program. It's a program that's helping homeowners to reduce their energy cost. It's creating local jobs. It's helping us meet our greenhouse gas emission goals. It's an open for innovation approach and it's gaining national and international attention. People know where Colwood is. And yet, the cost to each Colwood property owner is less than $1.70 per year. Now that we've got our new high school approved, I'm looking forward to working hard to secure an arts and cultural centre to go with it. I want to make sure that we protect our parks and natural areas and set the foundation for a healthy urban forest. I want to continue to look for new ways to get citizen input into decisions and keep taxes for a reasonable level. On November 19th, please vote Judith Collington for Coal Council.
these gels, I'm worried that I'm going to have to uh, keep it fast. Hi, my name is Rob Martin, and I am, am running for Colwood Council. A lot of you may not know me, so I'm just going to take a moment to just let you know who I am. I, I'm proud of the fact that I've lived here for the last 14 years. My wife and I have raised two wonderful children. They've gone through Sangster, uh, Dunsmuir, and uh, my son has now gone through Belmont and has, is at Great uh, Camosun, excuse me, and my daughter has graduated this year, or hopefully. <laughs> as well, my, uh, I'm kidding, she's doing very well. Uh, as well, my, my wife has worked within the school district for the last 11 years, uh, both in the library and as a teacher's assistant. For myself, I've been a, a very successful career to this point in business. I am a uh, sales director for a medical company. The, the region I take care of is from BC to Manitoba, Alaska to Oregon. And without bragging, and it's, I'm bragging, I'm the number one economic driver of our company uh, in the entire world. Um, before that, uh, in my 20s, I was idealistic, and so I worked for several uh, nonprofit organizations, the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA. I also volunteered at the uh, uh, Victoria Juvenile Detention Center. What do I want to do with Colwood? I want us to be the smartest managed community in BC. Now, what does smart management mean? It means effective administration, it means a balanced community where we can live and work, and a strong municipality with a constructive voice. Colwood has a capable staff. We need leaders to help them be successful. We need to promote economic growth within this community. We need to do that by driving and allowing developers to have an opportunity to grow here fast and in a smart and, and economical way. And finally, we need to have a constructive voice within the region. Uh, and I think call with Ken. Thanks for your time. And Sherry Ukins. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm running because I believe Colwood has the potential to be a great city. But it won't happen without strong leadership, good governance, accountability, and a can-do attitude. That's what I bring to the table. We need to make Colwood an enterprising destination community. To make that happen, Colwood needs to re-energize its relationship with business. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just need to shift gears and get things moving. I will work to promote positive change that drives business and development to our doorstep by eliminating red tape. I will work to ensure city staff have the leadership and strategic direction they need to get the job done. I want to develop a culture that engages and empowers staff to deliver excellent customer service. Sewers, schools, transportation, Fiscal responsibility and the transmission towers on Triangle Mountain are also important issues. I'm optimistic that new legislation will enable our community to finally move forward fairly on sewers. And we are all grateful for the province's investment of $100 million for two new high schools and jobs here in the West Shore. Now we just need to see the Royal Bay sale complete in order to get things moving again. And when it comes to transportation, Colwood needs innovative solutions that respect the development need trends of a growing community and the taxpayers who will ultimately foot the bill. Colwood, now is our time. It's up to you to cast your vote for strong leadership for a united community. On November 19th, I ask for your vote for Sherry Lukens. Thank you. Ken, a bunch of uh, question cards, and if you would like to ask a question, put your hand up and he'll give you uh, a piece of paper. At, at this time, as I said, I'm going to share with you the, uh, the questions that I have already received. So if you hear your question, there's no need for you to, uh, to write it down, and all the candidates will get to hear them. They just won't know which one they're going to get asked. So uh, the first question. Uh, apparently, the attendance of some councillors is less than 50% at council, and committee meetings and approvals are sometimes delayed because a quorum can't be reached. 
What's your position on publishing the reasons for every council, council and committee meeting, along with councillors' attendance records, maybe three times a year? Second question, what's your position on the CRD's sewage treatment plant? Third question, CMHC figures show that Colwood has had only 10 single-family home starts between January and September of this year, and Langford has had 212 in the same time period. What will you do to address expediting the process for building permits in Colwood, brackets, not development permits? Four, as Colwood is having difficulty meeting expectations for public safety provided by policing due to financial limitations from its size, will candidates explore amalgamation with another municipality such as View Royal? Six, what is your position on supporting people who lobby against services such as cellular radio signals and CREST? Would you consider supporting a referendum for the next municipal election to amalgamate all 13 municipalities of southern Vancouver Island? There's 19, isn't there? There is 13. Okay, I'm thinking Lower Mainland, sorry. Uh, for incumbent councillors, context statement. Colwood has an award-winning official community plan to serve as the guiding document for the city's sustainable community development. If you're an incumbent, what do you feel has been your greatest single achievement towards implementing Colwood's OCP during your term on council? For council and mayoralty hopefuls, what aspect of the OCP do you feel is the most important at this time and what will you do to help implement the OCP during your first term on council? Eight, do you volunteer in our community? If so, where and approximately how many hours do you invest each month? Nine, what is your position on the CRD's new strategy for human-powered transportation, quote, pedestrian and cycling master plan, close quote, that was reported on the 30th of October, Sunday edition of the Times Columnist? Ten, what's your position on light rail or commuter rail service to the West Shore? Eleven, high-density development is proposed in the Latoria and Lower Wishart areas where roads do not meet residential standards. Many pedestrians use those roads, sidewalks are absent, speeding is common, sight lines are not good, and the road surface is coarse and noisy. What will the new council do to fix the infrastructure so it can support the proposed increased residential growth of this area of Colwood? Twelve, are you in favor of outsourcing such services as road maintenance, park maintenance, administration, and other services, rather than providing them through the city payroll? Thirteen, are you in favor of subsidizing homeowners to retrofit solar panels to their homes? Fourteen, what is your position on subsidized loans for city employees? Fifteen, what is your position regarding the new deputy positions appearing on the city payroll? Sixteen, Colwood employs staff who belong to the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Local 374. What is your understanding of this union and how will you continue to foster a healthy and productive relationship between council, senior staff, and the union? And finally, seventeen, what do you want to see happen with the Royal Bay development and when would you like to see it happen? And for anybody who can answer it, probably the incumbents, what is its current status? Then I've got four questions for specific people, but I'm going to, to hold them. Uh, at the start of tonight, I was answered a few more questions. Some were repetitive, so I've knocked them off. Um, they've been asked word for word. Folks want to send me their questions. What are your greatest strengths and weaknesses you, bring to the, you will bring to the office of mayor, and what is your vision for Colwood's future? Those are for the two candidates for mayor. For everybody, do you support the concept of a 0% tax increase every year? Why or why not? 19, will you, what will you do to support the arts and cultural community in Colwood? And finally, how will you create more parks and green space in Colwood? So those are the questions that we're going to put in the box and select randomly, plus whatever questions that are going to come my way in, in a moment. So right now, let's, it's 25 to, uh, to 8, let's take uh, 5 minutes and give me uh, the chance to put those other questions together and we'll reconvene at uh, 20 to 8.
Thanks. The sleeping cots will be provided for those who would like to stay during the end of the session. <laughs> Given his recent experience in gaming grant funding dialogues, Skip has built an element of gaming into tonight's. <laughs> As I said special. to people throughout the province, my job was not to decide whether gaming was a good thing or not, mm -hmm. or who should have a casino or not, but merely uh, what should happen to the funds and how should they be distributed. Uh, there is one question here that I'm going to start with because uh, I'm not sure that anybody can answer it, but I'll give you my best understanding. The question is, why are there two separate all-candidate meetings tonight? <laughs>
we're certainly willing to look at innovation, which I think is important, and not shoot down any uh, any ideas that are put forward. We need to be open-minded. Please pass the mic to Cynthia Day. Thank you. So if I'm elected, uh, what I intend to do is to work with what we have that's existing to create better partnerships and to leverage the, uh, the things that are going into more things going. Uh, we have just received word this week that our new high schools are going to be built, which is a huge, huge success and a big weight off our shoulders. Something that we've been working on, uh, trying to get going, at least personally I've been involved since 1999 with the original planning uh, to get that going. And to bring our partners in, there's going to be tremendous opportunities for involvement, for more commercial uh, development to take place, which is going to really help to uh, move things along. As my dad, who was a very successful businessman, used to say, nothing su succeeds like success. And so as soon as we uh, start having uh, turned the corner, I believe that people are going to get on board and partnerships are going to be built. Um, through our hard work on council, I often think my job is tying together little bits of string that have somehow lost their way to each other. So that's what I'll keep doing. Jason Nott, please. Thank you. That leads right into the second point that I didn't get to make uh, when I did my introduction. Um, first off, all development has to pay their way, be it residential or business. Second, I will do my best to make the city more efficient by cutting unnecessary red tape and administrative delay. The process right now takes far too long. Time is money. Uh, I, I'll do my best to attract businesses here. There are various incentives that we could look at. Tax holidays is one. Uh, lower cost charges is another. Uh, lower building permit charges is another, but as I said, Businesses have to pay their way too. Everything that moves here costs every resident money. More roads, more police, more fire, more schools, more traffic. It's a very delicate balancing act to make sure the residents are looked after, while at the same time recognizing that all its tax base needs to be diversified as commercial businesses. And no more, not so many residential you know. Who is the third one, Ken? That is three. That was three. All right. All right. I've already, I lost count because I asked the lady in gray and black over here to pick another question. And that is uh, number 21. And here is the, uh, the, the question. What is your belief on the development future of the water frontage of the Royal Bay site? Um, is a passenger ferry viable? And connected to that is question 17, which is actually the one she drew, which is what do you want to see happen to the Royal Bay development, and when would you like to see it happen? So what's going on with Royal Bay? What would you like to see happen? And specifically, uh, what's happening with the water frontage, and is a passenger uh, commuter ferry viable? Ken, did you have some, uh, some names? Rob Martin, Sherry Lukens, and Judith Cullen. Okay. I have no idea what's going on with Royal Bay. <laughs> um, it, it needs to be developed. It's sitting there waiting, uh, and there's a, there's a lot of profit to be made out of that too. So there, there's an opportunity for, for a developer to definitely come in and, and develop that land in a beautiful way so that it becomes a very important aspect of, of Colwood. The ferry, I, again, I would not see the municipality being involved with the ferry at whatsoever. I, if, if it makes sense from a private business standpoint, I'm all for it. Uh, it would be great to cut down from a commuter standpoint. If My understanding is at one, one point, there was a ferry that went somewhere around here straight to into CFB Esquimalt for the CFB Esquimalt workers, and it, it seemed to be a popular aspect. If we can get people off the roads and using the transit to get them downtown, I think it's a wonderful concept. Uh, I'm definitely working towards uh, Royal Bay developing in a thing that makes sense. So I would want us to look at developing Royal Bay over the next 20 to 30 years. We're, we don't need to be in a hurry, we need to do it right. And uh, that's it, I don't need the whole minute, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sherry Lucas, please. 
Thank you. I understand with Royal Bay that there is an accepted offer on the table. Um, Lehigh and the uh, potential developer are working through that right now. Um, as we all know, also the Royal Bay School um, was uh, given money last or earlier this week actually by uh, the provincial government, so that will be the start of it. Um, what I would like to see is a live, work, play community down in Royal Bay. Uh, the school would be absolutely a center um, of, of commercial and social recreation. I'd like to see the waterfront sort of like a Granville Island or a Lonsdale Key kind of perspective with unique shops where we can go down and visit. It isn't only a local attraction, it becomes an island destination for people. With respect to the ferry, um, I'm sure that the developer is doing all the reasonable work required to ensure that our um, bottom fishery is not devastated should there have to be retaining walls. Um, I would support a ferry there again to get traffic off of the roads and make it a easy access from the west shore to downtown. Thank you. Judith Collins. So I think Royal Bay is a site with absolutely incredible potential because there's, you can literally sort of reshape the landscape. So since I've been involved in council, and that's long, since long before I was actually on council, I've seen so many proposals for that site come and go, and they're all interesting, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what this one is. Um, I really hope it involves a lot of things like sustainability, there's a fabulous waterfront park that we could have there, it would be wonderful to have a village concept, it needs to tie into the new school and the new arts and cultural center that we want to bring back there. But really what I want to see is lots and lots of public input into what that site lo lo looks like. I want to see the developer put some ideas on the table, but then let's have lots of discussion in the community. This is a huge part of, of Colwood, um, and I think we all need to have a good look at, at you know, what is it we want to, to see there. I think the ferry is a really interesting idea. I know that people have looked at it in the past, it's pretty challenging. I gather it's pretty rough in the winter, so it's you know it's not always a reliable service. But if somebody can make it work, I think it would be fabulous. Thank you. Carol will be the first person leading off the next All question, right. and she'll follow be followed by Sherry Lukens and Rob Martin. Carol, Sherry, and Rob, new question. So this is interesting. How did you decide to come to this forum and not the other one? <laughs> I said yes to this one first. <laughs> because you're all here. Um, I, I also committed to this one prior to receiving the invitation to the other one, so that's why I came here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Who's the third? Second one is Sherry. Ross. Um, it, was, it, it certainly wasn't a difficult decision for me either. Um, I, I'm not sure what's going on, to be honest. I, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused, a little disillusioned. Uh, just so that you all know as well, uh, I was on the board of directors for the Colwood Ratepayers Association. Um, I have no information whatsoever. I know I was talking to Carol, who's a member as well. Um, nothing was shared with me, and I'm, I was on the board. Um, so I, I, it's, it's a mystery uh, to me. I, to be fair though, I have spoken to several people uh, when I was trying to figure out what was going on, and there are some good people over there, um, and there's some people who have some legitimate concerns, and, some, and they have something to contribute back to the, our community. I just wish we could uh, do it together rather than part. <laughs> Sherry? Sherry's already done that, so the next question. Did she do that question? Yes. She did? Oh, okay. <laughs> So while Ken is, is finding uh, people to answer this, the question is, will you support and pay for a crossing guard on the Chosen Road at Sangster School? And we will cross safely in this issue with the help of Gordy Logan, Judith Collington, Jason Knoll. Gordy, Judith, Jason. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we probably go broke. 
Uh, this is an easy question for me. I know there's some debate as to who should pay, but as a father of uh, kids who are uh, four, six, and eight, uh, this is a simple one. The fact is we need to uh, make sure that our kids get to school safely. Uh, that is an area that has a lot of vehicles, and you know, if we need to make a, a relatively small investment, and that's what we're talking about, is a relatively small investment uh, to make sure that our kids can cross, then I think we should do it. So can't open the door, I can't resist. You've heard this before, some of you. My favorite law firm is Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's next? Cheatham. Cheatham. How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> I can start by echoing the school guard crossing is really important. We've got to get our kids to, to school safely. It's been a big issue. Um, the history is that um, when Lehigh was operating, they paid for the school guard crossing program. When they left, we were left with a hole in the budget along with all of the other budget woes. And so um, the school guard pro pro uh, crossing program was cancelled. And of course, not surprisingly, people came out in droves and said, you idiots, we need school crossing guards. And we said, yeah, you're right. Um, and so what happened is, is we found a way over the last few years to pay for that process primarily through donations from, from local businesses. I'd like to see that keep going as much as possible, but where there's a shortfall, absolutely the city needs to step up the, to the plate and pay for it. Thank you. Oh, I'll have to say me too. Uh, unfortunately, I believe that uh, the school crossing guards are really should be the responsibility of the school board and the province. Uh, they have backed away from the fight. Uh, the safety of the children is at stake. The COVID has done a good job of finding innovative ways to pay for it, and I will continue to support that. Uh, my children are both grown now. They don't have to go to school, so it's not a personal question for me. Uh, I was just up at John Stubbs School, and I had parents there complaining about traffic at John Stubbs, and that's a 15 kilometer an hour speed zone. So. Should we fund traffic crossing guards? I believe we should. The province isn't going to, and uh, safety is at stake. Thank you. The next question is, what is your position on supporting people who lobby against services such as cellular radio signals and C-R-E-S-T? I think that's an acronym, not CREST, but I'm not sure. It's an um, emergency services communication system with, found within the CRD. Okay, yeah. so who is... Uh, yeah. Cynthia Day, Jason Nolt, and Gordy Vulcan. I believe that uh, people have to have the right to make their own choices for the environment that they choose to live in. So within their, their own homes, uh, I believe that people do have the right to, uh, to ask the government to not put in a, a wireless system if they uh, choose not to, because some people have uh, very real sensitivities and uh, health issues related to that. So uh, I support an individual's rights um, very, uh, as being very, very important and something that the community has to stand behind. Jason. Again, I support people's right to oppose anything they want. The fact of the matter is that, for example, smart meters don't have a high level of radiation. Some people are worried about it, some aren't. I agree, you shouldn't be forced to have one on your house if you don't want it. Same as uh, if, you, if you're afraid of uh, radio waves, you probably shouldn't be using a cell phone because that's a lot more power than your smart meter. But let's talk about this fiasco on Triangle Mountain where we have radio transmitters, FM radio transmitters, that are interfering with the lives of our residents. The uh, city has been trying for years to get that alleviated, and the federal government has been backpedaling and backpedaling and stalling, and that's where our concern should really be working at. It's fixing the mess on Triangle Mountain. Gordy. Like my, uh, like my colleagues here, I believe that everybody is entitled to their opinion and that we should respect that opinion and have, uh, have choice. And with the 
smart meters. I think that was uh, one of our biggest concerns within Colwood, anyways, was that our residents need to have a choice. The city also needs to stand up for residents when we're looking at uh, serious issues like uh, the Triangle Mountain Towers and the effect on those neighborhoods. Now, if we want to delve into Crest, I, uh, I chair the Crest Board of Directors, and I'm, I'm happy to stand up here and defend it, and happy to, uh, to talk to anybody after that, uh, after the meeting, to, uh, to set the record straight as well. But I, I want to say I think the issue is choice, and I think we've been doing a good job to make sure that uh, we stand up for the individual resident and neighborhood to make sure that their voice is heard, whether it's in the paper or with the minister, as we have uh, recently at UBCM. Thank you. Next question. Colwood employs staff who belong to the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Local 374. What is your understanding of this union, and how will you continue to foster a healthy and productive relationship between council, senior staff, and the union? To Carol Hamilton, Sherry Lukens, and Judith Cullington. Carol, Sherry, and Judith. <coughs> I believe we're talking to the, uh, about the QB Union um, 374. I'm not sure of the different numbers and that sort of thing. Uh, Colwood has had a long standing public service department. I think that's what we're referring to. And to the most part, the relationship between staff and the union component and council has been one of, of respect and of goodwill. Um, I think we can do more to. Uh, establish better relationships that keep these people within the family of the workers of, of the city of Colwood. Um, when I was on council, I had a good relationship with the, the regulating shop steward at that time, which is the policy and the process where comments and, and information would go back and forth. So I think that it would be easily undertaken. Sherry? Thank you. Um, I look forward to the opportunity to work with these people. I think they're a huge asset to the city. I think we have some very good people that work at the city of Colwood. Um, I look forward to understanding what their job descriptions are and what they're achieving on a daily basis. I do believe in a high performing culture at the workplace and when people have objectives and goals, I believe we rise to the occasion and the city and the um, residents will benefit from that. So I do look forward to learning um, what they're doing, I look forward to meeting them and I look forward to working with them in a collaborative way. Thank you. Judith. So yes, most of the staff at the City of Colwood um, are QP. We have, I think, a very good relationship um, with our QP representatives. Um, our staff work incredibly hard. They're a great group of people, and I'm proud that we pay a good living wage to the people who work very hard for us. Um, I think the most important thing is ongoing open dialogue. We're all part of a team working together, and I think we look to, to find the ways that make this city work to the absolute best way it can. Would you like to do a song and dance routine, Skip? <laughs> question 15, and I have misplaced that question 15. I'll find it. <laughs> no, it's between 14 and 6. <laughs> Last time I looked. Thank you. New no question while I find out what happened to 15. What is your position on the CRD's new strategy for human power transportation, quote, pedestrian and cycling master plan, close quote, that was reported on in the 30th of October Sunday edition of the Times Columnist. So that's the CRD's new strategy for pedestrians and cycling. To Rob Martin, Carol Hamilton, Sherry Lucan. Rob, Carol, Sherry. I was actually really hoping for question 15. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, I was, because honestly, I, did, I, I do not know what the new CRD plan is on the pedestrian. I didn't read it, uh, and I'm not familiar with it, so I don't want to stand here and tell you something that uh, 
I have no idea what the answer is to. I am supportive, just so you know. It's interesting, one of the things, when I've been walk, knocking door to doors, one of the things that some of the residents have talked to me about is the difference between Colwood and Langford when it comes to bike lanes. And they, they were saying, you know, Langford has all these wonderful bike lanes now, but the problem with Langford is that the, um, the cleaners have a tendency to brush all the dirt into the bike lanes, and so they're hard to use anyway, so they're, they're pulling out to the road. So, you know, you always run into another problem when you start looking at these transportation. So we have to look at the whole picture of how it fits everybody within our community. And I'm very supportive of especially the Galloping Goose and some of the other um, trails that we have in use. <laughs> Carol. Thank you. Yes, I am supportive of the CRD Master Cycling and Pedestrian Plan. I think a healthy and sustainable community looks at all forms of transportation as an integral part of how we live in our community. Sherry. I'm also supportive of it and something that I want to see is continue to enhance. I think it's imperative for Colwood um, to continue to go down that road. I know being on the Planning and Land Use Committee um, that we often are asking about development of trails, um, cycling um, lanes, that sort of thing when we're looking at new developments. So it's something we absolutely need to continue to incorporate as we build out the city and grow. When I was writing down numbers, I think I missed 15. <laughs> that was the really tricky question. Though. I don't want to get down. 12. Oh, we can find 12. <laughs> we'll just say that 15 is the new 12. <laughs> okay. The details for the general government costs number and total salary for staff earning over $75,000 were obtained from the City of Colwood website and compared to the total revenue and total expenditures. These figures reveal a 95.6% increase in the cost of general government during the period 2005 to 2010 as compared to the total expenditures which have only increased 15.8% and the total revenues which have increased 48.1%. What is more alarming is that the number and cost of senior staff have increased over 240% in this period. If elected, are you prepared to initiate a comprehensive review of the cost of general government services and if required, take action to roll back administrative costs and staff complements to more appropriate levels. Good. So the question is really in that last paragraph. We don't have to remember all the numbers. If elected, are you prepared to initiate a comprehensive review of the cost of general government services and, if required, take action to roll back administrative costs and staff complements to more appropriate levels? Cynthia Day, Gordy Logan, Judith Cullent. Cynthia, Gordy, Well, first of all, I'm, I'm always in favor of examining the budget. And uh, the budget is, is important at home and it's important at the city. Um, the reality is that when we're working day to day on creating a budget, uh, we know intimately what the, what the needs are that we're addressing. And some of our needs have been um, long left un, unanswered. Uh, our finance department is bigger than it used to be. Uh, the staff that we have there now has been funded um, through overtime savings uh, because our, our staff was just plain getting burnt out trying to do all the work that needed to be done. There was uh, a lot of heavy lifting to be done in reorganizing and uh, certainly I will support a review but uh, also look carefully at how much time it takes to do that review. I don't want to do it at the expense of getting the other needed Uh, sorry, Gordy. Well, I think it's it's healthy for any municipality, any type of organization to do a review. 
Um, however, you know, I'm, I'm, a I'm a little skeptical of the numbers that were presented, to be honest with you, because I think, uh, and there's been some debate uh, through email in terms of the amount of revenue and, and the, the expense, and whether uh, the West Shore Chamber of Commerce, or I'm sorry, the uh, West Shore Parks and Recreation uh, was taken out of that figure. So I think some of those figures are skewed, quite frankly. Uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, if we're, if we're there to provide a service, we need to have the staff to be able to do that. Our challenge is to make sure that we bring in the revenue uh, through that service that we provide. So uh, the bottom line is I'm supportive of, of looking at over our overall operations, as I think anybody should. Uh, I, I'm interested in how that takes place. So I think we need to do a review of all of our costs every year at budget time, and I think that's the process that, that we try and do. To me, this question is really about, do we have the right staff with the right skills to do the job that we're trying to do? And one of the examples I keep coming back to is our planning department. Um, somebody has described Colwood as a very lean, mean fighting machine. We have essentially kind of two people in our planning department with two support staff and an awful lot of development going on. And think about, you know, Colwood Corners is about to come online, Royal Bay is going to start happening, there's a lot of other developments. So the question is, do we completely burn out our existing staff? Do we have the right complement? Do we actually need to be looking at increasing some of our staff in some areas? There are complaints about being slow on the building side. Do we have enough people in building inspection? Where's that balance between enough people to do the job and managing our costs? And we need to do both. Jason will be next up. Jason, the new question. Oh, for the next the question. question. Yeah. I found question 15. <laughs> regarding the new deputy positions appearing on the city payroll? This goes to Jason, Sherry, Rob. Jason. Well, as Judith just pointed out, the city is constantly evaluating the amount of manpower it has uh, for the job. Uh, I wasn't on council for the debate about the new de deputy position, uh, but I do know that the city doesn't spend money wastefully on salaries. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been pointed out as a very lean machine. Does it need to be reviewed every year? Can we do better? Probably. But uh, I think from what I've seen of the justification on previous councils for deputy positions, and I know they have been asked for again and again and again, uh, call it getting to be a big city. We need a bigger staff to handle that. And so short answer, I support those. And we will be, if I am the elected mayor, we will be reviewing city staff, duties, costs, and trying to make this even leaner and meaner. To Sherry. Thank you. I'm not sure what the deputy position is in, but if they're speaking with respect to engineering, um, I do know that the current um, uh, Michael Baxter has been taxed to the max with uh, working on the sewer project for the past three years and has agreed to do that on a very lean um, scale with uh, not a lot of support. So I understand that the previous CAO, um, Chief Administrative Officer, had approved a position for this deputy and therefore um, it should come to fruition if we're looking to open Colwood up for business and reduce some of the red tape, we do need that support. But again, we need to continue to fiscally manage our budget and ensure that our um, um, expenses align with it and we're not going back down the road we were in three years ago. Thank you. To Rob, please. <laughs> I knew I wanted to answer question 15. Uh, I, I, I sat on the sewer oversight committee with the city of Colwood. Uh, I know how much time the city has invested into sewers. Uh, with the new bylaws coming on board in the next little while, it's going to free up a ton of staff time. 
basically where I'm, where I'm coming from is when we look at Langford, uh, they're looking about a three month period to get a building permit and to get a developer going. In call, what I've heard as long as 18 months. I understand the reasons behind it. We are taxed. I do not want to save a dollar today and lose two dollars tomorrow when it comes to bringing business back into Colwood. We have to look at our staffing, we have to control our costs, but by the same token we have to be able to have business come here and be successful. And to do that we have to provide the resources. We have to have people in City Hall who can do the work and who can do the work right. Um, that's it. <laughs> That's great. Next one is question six, which is, would you consider supporting a referendum for the next municipal election to amalgamate all 13 municipalities of Southern Vancouver Island? Carol Hamilton, Judith Cullington, and Cynthia Day. Carol, Judith, and Cynthia. I already covered that in my opening introduction, but as far as going to, to push that to all 13 communities, I think we would be hard pressed to get any sort of cooperation overall in, in a reasonable amount of time. I am far more supportive on addressing that in a regional area because we have more common interests and more common goals and objectives in our area here, I'm afraid, than say making those same attachments to Central Saanich, uh, Oak Bay, so I'm more in favor of just keeping it to the West Shore at this time. Judith, please. Thank you. When people mention the issue of amalgamation, I usually ask them why they want to amalgamate. And they say, because it's going to lower all our taxes. At which point I point out that everywhere else it's happened, that hasn't worked that way. It's cost us money. Um, so I would support doing it if we have really good information. Um, but I think that we need to, to recognize um, both the, the cost of doing it and also the fact that we do really well in this region in terms of a lot of cooperation that already happens, um, whether it's you know, through the West Shore Parks and Recreation or West Shore Policing. Um, there's a lot of things we already work together on and so finding good ways to do that makes good sense. And Cynthia. Thank you. One of the many hats that I wear, uh, one of the dozen committees that I sit on, is the Intermunicipal Committee for uh, Family Court and Youth Justice. And uh, through that committee, um, I've had to actually lobby all 13 municipalities to make changes uh, to our uh, constitution. And it is amazing how many different places there are and how many different ways services are offered in this one small area. Uh, so I don't see that as being a, an easy task um, in any small uh, sense at all. However, um, one of the things that uh, I do know um, is that every year we also, as we're carefully reviewing our budgets, we do a, a look outside of our municipality to compare ourselves. And uh, the last comparison that we did, uh, comparing what are, are the average um, house value and the average amount of taxes that we're paid on that average house value, Colwood was in the low to mid range. Um, so if we don't want our taxes to go up, I don't see malcommunication as being a solution. Thank you. Question? New question is how do you balance development and business with environmental concerns? Natural parks, etc. Gordy Loken, Judith Collington, Sherry Lucas. Gordy. That's actually an easy one given uh, how we've progressed with our OCP. So, what we've looked at is uh, higher density. So, we've looked at going up, preserving uh, more land, more uh, green space, so less sprawl. And we've also encouraged developers and, and builders to incorporate. Uh, many features that save energy, that are environmentally friendly, that uh, are economically uh, viable as well. So uh, I think uh, looking at the smaller footprint, looking at um, uh, giving a little, such as uh, a quattro as an example, uh, although they've stalled, but looking at some of the density down in the Esquimalt Lagoon and the amount of park space as a result of our compromise that we were able to 
So I think things, uh, those various strategies that can go a long way uh, in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years to make sure our environment is, uh, is sustainable. Judy. Thank you. Also an easy one for, for me to answer because I spent a lot of time on the other side of the Coal Council table promoting something called smart growth. As Gordy mentioned, it's all about you know, focusing development into, into small areas, doing higher density nodes, and allowing yourself to protect other areas of, of, as parks. So a quattro was mentioned as a, as a good example. Uh, another one that was fairly recently approved is a development along Goldstream Road on the old coal and dairy. And so there's, there's quite a high density development up against the road, um, also helps to protect some heritage, and there's a very large natural area at the back left to learn as park. That's the kind of model I like to see happen. Thank you. Sherry. Thank you. I was not uh, part of the official community plan development, but I'm quickly getting up to speed on it. I do have my copy that I have been reading, thanks to Judith. Um, having sat on the planning and land use committee, and I still sit on it, um, we are doing a lot of work with developers as both Judith and Gordy have mentioned, about making density nodes. So we're building up instead of out. Uh, there is a lot of discussion around the table to ensure that we are sustaining the green space that we require. I do live in a quattro and truly appreciate what has happened there as far as the compromise and retaining the um, orchard down in front. And I think that Colwood has a huge opportunity before it. It's one of the only communities in the Greater Victoria Regional District with the amount of land that we have, that we have the opportunity to keep it um, Colwoodized, I'm gonna say, keep the culture here and keep that happening. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna read you question 25, which is the next one, and I've, I've got to, to change it. It says, to supporters of Solar Colwood, do you understand the greenhouse effect in physics and mathematical terms? If so, can you explain it? So um, my first thing is, well, people who do not support also need to understand <laughs> uh, what, what they're talking about. Uh, if anybody would care to try and answer that in the time allotted, I'm not being smart, that, that's a tough question, but can, can anybody uh, give a quick answer to what the um, physics and mathematical effects of greenhouse gases are? <laughs> no, well, well do this kind of try. Gonna go to the world. I'm gonna keep this really, really, really simple. <laughs> We've all of us, over a long period of time, been putting a lot too many, many greenhouse gases, things like carbon dioxide, up into the atmosphere. Some of those gases are there for natural reasons, an awful lot of them are there for human caused reasons. Long story short, it's causing our planet to warm up. Long story short, it's going to cause us, it is already starting to cause us a lot of issues globally, and it's going to cause us a lot more down the road. We do need to do something about it. Okay, anybody else care to uh, question? No? Okay, good. As I, that one just didn't make sense to do on a, on a random basis because those not asked uh, would get off the hook. Skip, we might want to check our time. I am doing that. So okay. We've got about five more minutes. How many more do we have on the box? Well, there? we've got about a dozen. So why don't I take the last one from here, if that's okay, and then I've got some specific questions to specific candidates, and we'll do that for, uh, we'll do one or two of those, and, and then we'll uh, try the open mic thing. Does that work for everybody? So we haven't got through all the questions, but at least we've been fair about which questions we're, uh, we're going through. You're close to me, sir. Can you pick one? This question will be for Jason. Cynthia and Carol. Jason, Cynthia, and Carol. Okay, and it is question two, which is, what's your position on the CRD sewage treatment plant? And I think Jason's name was first, was that correct? Yes, that's correct. Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, as a scientist, I can tell you that what is proposed is totally unnecessary at this point. It is being forced upon us by the province and the federal government. Uh, all the science says that what we are doing is sustainable until Victoria gets bigger. 
what we are doing that's bad for the environment is not going to be solved by secondary treatment, and that is putting heavy metals onto the seafloor. That won't be solved by secondary treatment, that will only be solved by tertiary or higher treatment. That is, a that is what we should be looking at, and that is what we should be looking at 5, 10, 15 years down the road. Uh, what I am offended at is that the province and the federal government are forcing us into this, and they seem to be backing away from the table. What's going on? Cynthia, please. I'm not terribly pleased about having to uh, stand up and defend um, sewage treatment in Victoria. Uh, when the two referendums were done in Colwood on sewage treatment, it was interesting that uh, while the citizens voted not to uh, take on uh, sewage treatment in Colwood, they did vote in favour of sewage treatment at that time. Uh, so I think that was a clear message uh, from us, that if you're going to treat it, you have to do it right. Uh, so I'm, I'm very concerned that we have tried very hard at the CRD table uh, to talk about doing um, whatever treatment we do in the best possible way. And for me, that would be uh, a much greater uh, level, not secondary, at least tertiary treatment, in order to do it. And there's other communities that are doing that on the island. In the Comox Valley, uh, they've had tertiary or secondary sewage treatment for uh, 30 years is not new technology. There are new technologies that are coming online that could save money, and uh, I'd like to see us utilize them. To Carol, please. I agree with much of what uh, both Jason and Cynthia have said, and, and the interesting part of all of this is that the CRD has jumped ahead and, and run all these studies, um, and both the, it's a three-way partnership with between the CRD, which is us folks, and the provincial government and federal government, and they're not jumping into the fray with their money. So I think this is still a long way away. I think there's other things that we can be doing in stormwater management and, and treatment of, of our surface waters and things like that that can help mitigate the whole sewage slash septic situation before we have to get to that incredibly expensive outlay to work with it doing it right. If we hear from Rob, then we've gone through the whole cycle. Perfect. Same question Rob. Rob. Thanks. Sorry, am I answering that question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what it is? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know what it is. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? Um, the C the CRD. I, I know too much about sewer. It's, at one point, you start learning too much about sewer, and it, it really starts to get to you because, um, you know, we have the local issues that, like in Colwood, around our sewers, and then we start talking about uh, the greater CRD. We have to take care of our oceans. I, there's no doubt about that. Is this the right way to do it? I don't think so. I'm not sure. Uh, from a, I, like, I'm certainly not a scientist or anything else. But from a financial standpoint, it seems to me as though we're going down a road that looks quite ugly, to be honest. It, it doesn't look like it makes good economic sense. Uh, it doesn't make good economic sense in the short term, and I don't think it's going to make good economic sense in the long term. We have to, you, like if you look at Victoria Sewers, for example, their, their pipes are starting to collapse. And so they're having to look now at, at charging the taxpayers to, uh, to re put that in. So it makes sense that you start looking long term. I just don't think this is the way to do it. Okay, the next uh, couple of questions are for candidates for mayor, so I'm going to flip a coin to see heads or tails. And it's tails, so Carol gets to go first with the, uh, the mayor questions. So the first one is, how will you as mayor ensure that council is working effectively for the betterment of the community? That's going to be an interesting um, project come November the 19th, and um, I think I'm going to rely on a lot of my interpersonal skills. I'm a business owner, I work with staff all the time, I've uh, been involved in many um, committees, boards, executives, and have always managed to find the high road and a cooperative and collaborative way to work. 
so I'm going to be working hard to, to um, find out who my other colleagues would be at that time and, um, and get them on, on board with good communication. Thank you. I've, uh, as I said, worked with uh, two different mayors and a whole bunch of different councillors. I've seen some pretty nasty infighting. Uh, what would I do to fix that as mayor? Well, there was a question here about attendance. Uh, that's one that I would look at very carefully. Uh, when I get to be mayor, I'm going to ask councillors which committees they want to be on, and more importantly, which ones are they available for meetings. And the idea of putting the attendance on a website, I think, is a great one. My feeling is if I put somebody on a committee and they miss four meetings in a year, they're going to be bumped from a chair down to a vice chair, from a vice chair to an alternate, from an alternate off the committee. Those committees are important. They pre-filter all of the data going to the council so we can make an informed decision. If the committees don't work, the city doesn't work. The one, attendance, two, interest, three, experience, and four, I'm going to work with whoever I get as a council. Okay, keep, keep the mic, we'll let you answer this one first, and then Carol, and then I think it's time for uh, open mic. Second question is, uh, given the very sizable tax increase in the last three years, what would you expect the average of the years 2012 to 2014 annual tax rate increases to be? Since neither of you is an incumbent, I guess that's a fair question to you both. Well, I've been following the tax increases for the last few years with great interest. Uh, and the city has a five-year plan that shows what the expected bond up is going to be. And it's going to be about a 2 to 3% increase in each of those years. That's going to keep up basically with inflation, salary increases. As we mentioned we have a union uh, in our public works. They get salary increases negotiated with the Greater Victoria Labor Relations Board. Those have to be honored. Uh, so that has, is a bump up. The cost of salt fits your roads that to, when it snows goes up. That has to be covered. Uh, so probably a 3% tax increase approximately for the next few years. We did get hit with some unfortunate extra expenses that the city should have seen foreseen coming. Uh, Royal Bay being reclassified from industrial to residential costs. That's a whole lot of money. The RCMP hitting us with 90% of their costs instead of 75 before we reached the 15,000 population was another big hit. Those won't happen again. I think that, um, you know, when, when on council and, and doing that review, I mean, there's always a, a mind to keeping things in a reasonable perspective. Um, there is a way to budget in advance, as Jason has said. We have a five-year plan that, that's on the books, um, and that doesn't account for increased costs through winter storms and, and stuff like that that we had back in what, 2006 and that sort of thing. So we have to be mindful of what that is. I wouldn't see, you know, if you build in that automatic of cost of living, inflation rate, that kind of thing, and then try and keep to that, I, I think is reasonable um, as long as services are not being cut, as long as, long as you can justify those kind of, of increases. I'm not sure, I, I as a taxpayer, can undertake those. Okay, thank you. So now we'll move to the, uh, the, the open mic portion. So if you have a burning question that has not been asked, uh, now, now is the chance. Um, I'm just going to ask everybody, if, if you want to ask a question, could you start by stating your, your name and uh, where you live? That doesn't have to be your complete address. <laughs> Anybody? And there's the mic right there. My name is Pam McKean and I live in Collwood. None of you have reached senior citizenship level yet. I would like to know what you think at the Wanda Fuga Parks and Rec Centre of building a parkade. It's very difficult mornings for seniors to find a parking space there. Surely the time now is to go up to two levels and sell some of the on street where they park in the park and ride 
and make a park and parkade there. Do you have any jurisdiction over the parks and rec? Thank you. Thank you. I would love to answer that question. I actually sit as the chair of um, Colwood's Transportation Public Infrastructure Committee right now. Um, one of the things that I've been doing recently is working with BC Transit and the West Shore Parks and Recreation. We've been having conversations all about the problems of the fact that the transit users are using the seniors park and ride. West Shore Parks and Rec, I will give you all a warning, is planning at the beginning of December to bring in and enforce a four hour parking time limit. So what we in Colwood are doing at the same time is looking at what are the options that we can provide to make more transit parking. So that we've got transit parking, but we keep space for the senior center and we keep space for all of the, the mums and dads and kids who come up to, to use that facility. Um, I don't think we've got the money to build a, a two-story parkade, but I think we've got lots of opportunities. Aren't you also having a meeting with the casino, uh, I think this week or next week, um, to talk about, you know, can transit users use some of their parkade? So I think there is some, it's an important issue and there are solutions out there. Anybody else? I have one. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Peter Nowak and I live in Colwood. Of course, I'm the border of Lambert, so I get to look at uh, all sides. Uh, one of the candidates that left the brochure out in the hallway has a uh, suggestion that she would support uh, public and private partnerships for to say uh, to reduce costs and ensure value for your tax dollars is the way she puts it. I'd like to find out your opinions on that particular issue. Thank and you. Who is who is the brochure? Is that who you're directing a question to, or everybody? No, she. The brochure person is at the other. Oh, meeting. all right. Okay. <laughs> post-secondary education uh, institutions like the Molson College, possibly other performing arts um, uh, colleges as well. Um, there's no issue with having a partnership. Partnerships are totally welcome in Hollywood and we can absolutely uh, work with them. Uh, the, the question is not I'm also very concerned and hope each and every one of you will do your homework with respect to who's arriving at the council table to actually represent you. Uh, I know we're all human. We're not going to be perfect. We are going to obviously miss the odd meeting. I also support um, putting council's attendance at council meetings, committees of the whole, and um, any other committee on a website so that the public can see whenever they go to the website. Um, I would also support um, 
I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say. I'll pass it on. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I also think attendance at council meetings is really important and I try and make sure that they're, they're my first priority in terms of what goes, goes into my diary. Um, if anybody's interested, I have published on my website and there's also some hard copies out front. Um, thanks to the help of Jason, um, some information on the current council and how many of the council meetings and how many of the committee meetings, budget committee meetings that they've made over the last period of time. Um, and I would also say that one of the things that affected me personally is I was an alternate on the Parks Committee and I think I made it to all but two of the Parks Committee meetings because one of the uh, members of that committee did not attend any of the meetings. I think that was shameful. Thank you. I just want to, uh, I think those are all great comments. I think you deserve uh, to have a council meeting, hear your issue and give you an answer as quickly as, as we can make it happen. Um, I also think that not only attendance is important, but how people are treated and um, the, the level of preparedness that people have for meetings is really important, which is why I'm, I'm supporting uh, bringing video of our council meetings uh, online so that you can actually see what we're talking about and get involved, um, even from the comfort of your own to know what's going on. I know it's hard to make it. I find it really hard to make it to council meetings all the time. But uh, we get there, uh, and we get there to try to make, make a difference and to try to do in our best possible way what's right. And uh, I don't want to see people feel um, uh, somehow that they can't come there, that they don't understand the process or it's too unfamiliar to participate in. I, I personally think it's absolutely vital that we publish people's attendance records and that they've actually attended the meeting on time and have made that concerted effort. You know, everybody uh, makes sacrifices. We're all very busy. And uh, I, I think the public has the right to know who isn't coming, who's not coming on time, and who is stepping up to the plate to make sure that the city's business is getting done. So I totally agree that, you know, if, if, if we're looking at um, developing the community and growing it, then we need to make sure that uh, the people that we're relying on to bring that investment know that we're going to be there uh, to, to hear their application and be flexible in our schedules. And I know many of us have been called at the very last minute because we haven't had a quorum, and we all drop everything to get to the city to get it done. That's our commitment, and you all need to, need to know what our attendance records are. So, Rob, and then Sherry, remember <laughs> what she was going to say, and I don't think I all went so I'm going to weigh in on this. I mean, I, I figured it was going to be a two-person two answer on there, but absolutely, it's important to know on the attendance day. But clarification, Maureen, was that committee meetings that were stalling you, or was it council meetings? Council because I just wanted to expand on the fact that there is a contingency of citizen involvement in the, in the committee's levels. There, there are council representatives and there are community representatives. And I, for one, when I was on council, had issues with attendance on our committee. Sometimes that was, and more often it was commitment from the community, those citizen representatives that were there because they count their votes too on that committee. And so it's really important folks when you apply or, or put your names forward for committees that you are also committing to be that attendance. Rob and then Sherry. I'm not gonna repeat anything other than to say to you, if, if elected to council, I am committing to attending as much as possible unless I die or someone else dies. <laughs> um, I am making this a priority. Uh, it's three years that I've discussed with both my employer and with my family, and it's understood. I have that disease, I just can't remember the name of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I wanted to add was, uh, I see on the website today that 
there are a lot of meetings, committee meetings that are cancelled. And so I would like to understand when I get elected whether or not we need to do a review of the committees we have. Are they all necessary if we're cancelling that many meetings? Do we need to take up the time of staff and of council um, to just cancel them? So I would like to see those reviewed when I am elected. Thank you. Just to say that a lot of the council meetings that were canceled were right after the last election. So I'll be watching. <laughs> It's in the public domain. I have some information here that forces me to ask a lot of questions about it. About people that are not doing a full disclosure of their interests, their connection to each other. Somebody's doing a development and somebody's on council voting for it. Uh, somebody owes money to somebody. There's some legal action against somebody and it's not disclosed. And uh, this has to do with uh, some questions I'd like to ask here, that uh, have these legal fees been paid to a law firm that uh, was doing some work? Has the money been paid to somebody who was sued for not having, uh, uh, having moved out of a facility without paying their, their debt or re replacing the facility? Somebody who was doing a development and he couldn't vote on it, but somebody on council who owed this person money was sitting and voted in favor of it. So my question, especially to the candidates for mayor and to anybody else who wants to answer it, what's your approach to this and how would you deal with full disclosure, personal interest, hidden agenda, and conflict of interest? And fortunately, what's in here and is in the public domain applies to two people that are on council at the moment and one is running for mayor. And it's still open. And they're not here. Is it Peter? Pierre? Pierre? Um, I'm aware of what you're talking about. I've read that report um, that was released back in June. Um, under privacy, rules and regulations, just as your copy has, names are not included, um, and it's dealt with in generalities. Uh, some of that stuff, yeah. Um, those costs have not been incurred by the city, so it's not really a, a, a question for council members and, and that sort of thing. What I have understood is in discovering that that has been a situation or there's been some suspicion or whatever that's come up around this that right now there's policy being drafted at, from the CAO uh, that will strengthen all of those conflict of interest issues and help to add more to those disclosures or more detail so that it doesn't leave those gray areas or those open loopholes. And if elected mayor, I will ensure that that's the case and that we really put that forward as a priority. Thank you. Um, I agree with, with, with that. Uh, one of the things we must do when we file for council is a statement of financial disclosure. Uh, I don't know that the city ever goes through all of the court records and checks everybody's statement. Uh, I suspect not. That's something I would like to see happen. If it can be done, I will see that it is done. Uh, for the report you were talking about, some of the things in that report that are public that concern me and some of the city's past financial practices, uh, advancing money to councillors and staff, uh, IOUs on, on memo, on sticky notes, uh, that's all in that public report. Uh, and that concerns me, that has been fixed as I understand. Uh, 
I don't think it will happen again. I think it was part of the growth of Colwood from a small community to a large city. Uh, as far as councillors suing each other or owing each money, uh, other money, those are civil matters, but certainly if somebody owes money and they don't disclose it on their financial statement, that is falsifying the statement and grounds for dismissal. Thank you. I'm also aware of the information that you're discussing this evening. Um, it really concerns me that people with this type of attitude or agenda would step forward to represent you um, as a whole in the community. Um, I hope you know before you tonight are some very honorable people and some people that I respect greatly. And therefore I hope that again, as I said earlier, that you do your homework, you know who you're electing, and if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> candidates for the mayor. Um, we had an issue. 
issue with um, with the council and with with um, going through the committee and then going to council. Our issue was we've never ever gotten a written um, statement saying that what we had what we what we had asked for was not allowed to be. We were told by actually the mayor that our 30 days was up, but we'd never been told that we that it had not been approved or disapproved. Will you assure that there will be things in writing when people apply for something that, um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> when people apply for something that is um, important to them, that at least they will get recognition for it and at least say, no, we haven't approved it and why we haven't approved it. It went to a council meeting without us being even able to talk to council about it. And that was a decision that was made by the mayor. So I would hope that it would be done more fairly and equally for everybody. Okay, um, if, you look, if, if you look at my record uh, on council, I've always stood up for citizens' rights and always respected their concerns. Uh, certainly, if you have made an application to council, you deserve a written right, uh, report on why it was denied. So I will do my best to see if we can get that done. As I pointed out before, mayor only gets one vote on council, so if that's a change in policy, I will need support from the rest of council, but I will do what I can. Carol, and I'm going to restrict that to the two mayor candidates, if that's yes, all right, that's because all we're running out there. And Andrea, this is the same thing. It, it's just a matter of courtesy. If you've made a request to council that needs an answer one way or another, I would expect that you would get that one way or another. Thank you. Hi, I'm sure we're going back. Um, we hear a lot about infighting and conflicts, and if you look around the room, you can see there's a, the majority of the people are, are not 40 years old or under. I think this is why a lot of people, when you hear about infighting and conflicts, people my age and younger don't come out to vote, they don't come out to meetings like this, and they don't get involved in politics. So I guess my question is to the, to the mayoral candidates, specifically how will you bring positive energy to your team so that they get the work done effectively and positively and maybe inspire other people to get involved as well? I think we covered that off to a degree in, in just working with leadership skills and, and that sort of thing. Um, I think that it's important to bring more of the community members on board and, and I would love to see that being uh, younger generation groups. Um, I think I can speak fairly well to say that most of the committees um, not that there's anything wrong, I'm in that retirement age too, uh, but it, are, it, it tends to be people that are, are, have less of a workload on their plate that can be available for those committees and that sort of thing. But if you're interested, uh, committee appointments happen usually in December and all of that sort of thing will be ruled out. So if you're at all interested, I would just, you know, encourage you to make yourself known to the city of Colwood and they will be passing on that information to the new council. Thank you. Uh, as I pointed out, I worked under uh, two different mayors uh, as a councillor with two different styles of uh, handling meetings. Uh, the first three years under Mayor Beth Gibson were a real pain to go through and uh, I'll do my best to make sure that doesn't happen. It depends who you give me on council. Uh, I've always been civil in my debate, and I will expect the same of my councillors. Uh, that's as far as I can go. I can't throw them off council because you put them there. Okay, as we go to the last question, uh, there is a mix and mingle afterwards, so you will have a chance to, to talk personally to uh, people you want to talk to, but to respect everybody's time, we did say 9 o'clock, and we're a little bit beyond that, so, sir. Yes, yeah, so I'm Mike uh, Stuart Simmers. I live in Colwood almost a stone to throw away from Langford, actually. Um, now, my question, I have a technology background, and my question is, um, all my dealings with Colwood have been really archaic and very paper-based and all of this, and I'd like to know, from doing business, um, are, are there
there any plan for the mayor's uh, candidates? What are their views on using technology to uh, have a lot of the, the um, forms done online, doing things with email, things like that, uh, and improving the computer technology that uh, your staff needs to do be more effective and efficient, because I see very little of it. I see a very poor website. Second part of that question is, what do you, you, what do you plan to do, or would plan to do to communicate outward? It's great to go on to YouTube and see the uh, uh, meetings afterwards, but let's see them online as they are happening. There's no reason to do that. You can use lots of tools to be have meetings, um, Skype example, these kind of things. There's a lot of technology you're totally ignoring. It can decrease your cost of doing business and not require um, increases in uh, staff costs, etc. like that. So uh, for the mayor and anybody else on the staff. Okay, the, the first thing I would like to do as mayor is update our website. It is very, very difficult to navigate around. There are some real jams in there if you dig. For example, the minutes of every single committee and council meeting for the last, I believe, six years are on there, but they're really hard to get to. That needs improvement. Staff needs improvement, especially the engineering and transportation and public work staff needs improvement in their uh, plotting and uh, surveying software. That's been put before council a number of times. It's a very expensive item. Council has had to deal with uh, huge tax increases in the last few years, and it's been bumped back and bumped back again. That's something that will probably be coming forward in the next budget year, and it's something I would like to support, but I'm going to have to look at the bottom line before I say I will support it. Uh, the final question I'm sorry was? Sorry, the, the first part was about what would you do internally, and part of that would be putting forms online and doing business online, not just sort of websites and internal things. The second part of the question was communicating to your, uh, um, instead of uh, just putting uh, things in YouTube after the fact, but actually being live and communicating using the newer tools that allow communication. I, I would like to investigate having council meetings at least live. Uh, they used to be on Shaw TV, as I recall, many, many years ago, and uh, I don't believe Shaw did that anymore because they figured their audience was uh, pretty small, but certainly with Skype, things have gotten a lot cheaper than running full TV crews something I will look at. If I had been able to read the six minute version of this, we would have touched on that part too. But yes, I mean, I think that our website was designed at a time when a computer was about half the size of this room. Uh, it goes back that far. So we do definitely, it was stuff that was talked about when I was on council at that time, but the priority was to get other areas of our infrastructure within the office administration up to speed. And as Jason pointed out, we're, I believe they're still looking at those plotters and, and they tie into engineering and those kinds of departments so that that flow of information is all in one. Um, but yes, it's very much on my radar screen and, and I think that it's time. I think we can work um, with the infrastructure and, and with the funds available and get something started in that regard. So my final remarks are, you've been marvelous. It's five after nine, we've lost hardly anybody. I think it's been an extremely productive night, but I have a question for you. It's the first time I've used this format with random questions and random answers. Did that work for you? Uh, the rest of the evening's yours. We'll uh, be around and the uh, candidates will be around.